Hey guys, we're gonna talk about Draconian Princess Fina. She's supposedly coming next week. We're gonna talk about her base form, her, her shift form, their weaknesses and strengths, and I'm gonna give my final thoughts at the end. So let's go. She hasn't been um, officially confirmed yet, but you can see here in the pick in the banner for Far Plane Wanderers 2, you can see Draconian Princess Fina next to the uh, Dark Fina and Saul, and also Axer and Cleon. So they should be uh, releasing uh, her a new Vision Awakening next week. So the Dr Draconian Princess Fina overview. Draconian Princess Fina is a magical damage healer who wields light and dark in base form. She shifts her focus to light, evoke LB damage in her brave shift form. So base form strength, she can equip staves, rods, uh, bows, whips, maces, also equip hats, clothes, robes, and accessories. So she gains a lot of skill modifiers and stats when awakened to new vision. She also gains LB damage, evoke damage, and mag DDH passives. So here is a passive, a packed with Bahamut, level 5, increased mag 400, increased modifier 52.5 to flare of shadow, flare of light, increased modifier 40 to arc, uh, punisher burst, and dystopia burst, and last is increased modifier 30 to light mega flare and shadow mega flare. So that no one will be sad, increase equipment mag 50% and accuracy 25% when single wielding any weapon. And flame of charity, increase LB damage 150%, increase evoke damage 30%. Your coin of Princess Fina's weaknesses in base form, she doesn't gain any new skills upon her new vision awakening. She also also geared towards magic to double hand with a 200% MTDH passive. Although she has 50% magic to dual wield as one of her passives, she doesn't have the increased chain cap modifier of 200%. So she can't really take advantage of the innate dual wield and also the true dual, magic true dual wield of 50%. She will fall behind in terms of damage compared to true dual wield mages who have the true dual wield mastery. So here's a sample rotation for her base form. So first we imperil light and then we fill Asper Gauge every turn and unlock light mega flare for the succeeding turns. And then unlock triple cast on turn 2 and do some dam damage with the uh, unlock light mega flare. And uh, on turn 3 use her cooldown followed by light mega flares so that's 264 modifier. On turn 4, unlock Light Mega Flare again and Triple, triple Cast again. Use her, her LB as soon as her LB gauge is full to take advantage of a 250% increase in mag for 11 turns. So uh, you could just replace turn 1 with the LB if you want the 250 buff, or you can just uh, buff her mag externally. Since her LB doesn't have, um, didn't have uh, any mod boost, it still hits for a measly 44 mod. So if you have her STMR or TMR equipped, she can LB on turn 1 for the 250% increase in mag for 11 turns. So how do we build our, her base form? You can build Draconian Princesses Fina for either Magic True Dual Double Hand or Magic True Dual Wield. It will be easier to build her MTDH though since she already has 200% MTDH passive. Equip her with a high flat mag like Dark Gambitin. Her TMR also gives her 90% mag bonus, so equip that as well if you don't have any better equipment. To increase uh, magic TDH, you can equip Corrupted Mage, Enchanting Archer from Sarah. Corrupted Mage is SMR from Archmage Kefka. And or Azuri Radiance from Starlight Elena. Other notable equips include Ark's Hat from Ark, um, Minister's Coat from Wizardess Shantoto, First Doll, Doll from A Child, and Heliolite from um, Saul. That's his SEMR. As for her vision card, a Heartless Sage from Envy Saul is perfect for her as it gives her 100 flat mag and 130% mag bonus. 
Alternatively, you can equip her with Demon Who Learned Humanity, that's from Ibarra. If you are lacking in MTDH equipment, that gives her 50% um, MTDH. Alright, let's move on to her Brave Shift Form. So, Brave Shift Form is av available from turn 1. Duration is 4 turns, cooldown to normal is 4 turns, cooldown to Brave Shift is 2 turns. She can equip the same equipment as the base form. Um, in Brave Shift form, she will forgo her dark abilities in favor of her light evoke magic abilities. So she loses all her dark abilities and all her abilities will be light in Brave Shift form. She does more damage in Brave Shift form thanks to her abilities benefiting from evoke damage, evo mag, and LB damage. She can also quadcast without the need to unlock it. So at turn 1, you can quadcast your skills. So here are her skills. Pure Magia Summon, level 5, light evoke damage, 73 to 1 enemy, bolting strike chains. So she can quadcast that. Grace of the Dragon King is a passive. Ah, uh, no, no, it's an active skill. Increase mag 300% for 4 turns to cast her. Increase light, physical, and magic damage 15% 15 uh, 15 for 4 turns to cast her. So she's easier to buff in this form. Doesn't have to use LB. And it's 300% uh, mag. That's part of her quad cast. And next is Dragon King's Light Wings. Decrease light resistance 120% for 4 turns to 1 enemy. Increase evocation gauge by 4. So she can also be built for LB damage. This is her ultimate use in this um, Brave Shift form. Her, her LB has 24 hits and can be chained with Dark Fina and Sol's base form LB. She also has an LB damage passive of 150 and an active LB damage boost of 250. Her LB also benefits from Evo Mag passive of 230% and Evo damage of 30% which is a bit on the low end. So here is her, her LB. It's called the Pure Summon Laser. That's translated from the Japanese version. 24 hits, cost 44 crests. Light evoke damage 71 to all enemies. So if you notice, it's a bit lower than her uh, chaining skill, but uh, it does benefit from the LB damage um, uh, modifier. Uh, also, Limitopia B uh, Ba is two uses per battle, unique selection and multicast. Increase LB damage 250 for three turns to caster. Can't be dispelled. Increase LB gauge 44 to caster. That means when you use this, you can use the LB next turn since it uh, fills the LB gauge to the max. Also boost LB damage 4 to 50, so that's uh, quite a bit of LB damage uh, boost there. Flame of Charity is increase LB damage 150%, so that's our passive for the LB damage. Also increase evoke damage 30%. And last is share your favorite trip together, level 5, increase magic, uh, that's flat uh, magic by 600, and increase evo mag by 230%, alright? So uh, here are her passives, she still has a 200% MTDH, but her uh, MTW, MTDW increased to 150 as opposed to 50% on her base form. She has innate dual wielding but no increase in chain modifier cap still. So that's a, that's kind of sad, but uh, let's go through the list. So we, we know that she has EVO mag 230. Also, she has mag 210% uh, bonus. So she's a bit easier to build than Infernal Fire Rain, who didn't have any mag passives in his skin. So it was uh, hard to build. Also increase MP60, defense and spirit, uh, defense uh, and HP 50%, spirit 40. Um, also has increased Bamut bonus stats 200% if you equip her with her TMR or SEMR. Uh, resistant to light and dark by 50%, completely immune to silence and compute, confuse. Um, has LB gauge fill rate of 100%, uh, also has recover MP 12% per turn, and also auto cast white mage rec recognized by the Dragon King every turn, but that is a trust mastery. Needs her STMR or TMR, increased evocation gauge 3 per turn. Also, she has a unique ability when she summons Bahamut, 
uh, 25% light magic damage for three turns. That's a boost. All right, so you can also evoke any Esper equipped in the party. So what are her weaknesses in her Brazier form? She doesn't have the increased chain modifier cap of 200%. So even though she has innate dual wield and 150% MTD MTW, she doesn't have the chain modifier. So there's no incentive to go through dual wield unless you want to equip two weapons. So she can't equip swords naturally. She, you have to dedicate a slot for equipped sword materia for her to equip Terra Sword Plus or the evoke damage. She also has a low evoke damage passive which is just 30%. So here's a sample build for her BS form. Build her for LB damage, evo mag, and evoke damage in her BS form. You can either go MTDH or MTW but uh, MTW is now more manageable thanks to the increase in MTW passive. 50% uh, uh, compared 150% uh, compared to 50% in base form. Equip Dark Gambitin on her for her, uh, for the high flat mag. If you're going MTW, uh, equip Terra Sword Plus with the help of Equip Sword Materia since she can't equip swords naturally. You can also go Black Roselia for the LB damage boost that's from uh, Sakura of the Delta Star. For LB equips, give her the Guardian of Light from Sora. That's a limited equipment. Azure successor for her vision card that's from Starlet Elena and Anima as her Esper for her LB damage boost. For Evo Mag and Evo damage, Radius Headband is good. That's from um, Ridia, Pure Summoner Ridia. Originator of the Final Summoning that's from Eurasia, Unaleska, sorry. Inheriting one's focus, Celestia, and duty to the world that's from Luna Freya are excellent choices. Other notable equips include Heliolite, Minister's Coat, Ravenheart, and Cursed Doll, Doll Plus. Okay, so here's the sample rotation for her Bracia form. First, we power up on the first turn by buffing Mag, Albi damage, and Light damage is easier because she can quad cast on turn 1. Imperil the enemy to light by 120 percent oh by the way this is already in shift form okay so turn one we shift all right so proceed to use her lb to cap a chain or chain with dark fina and Saul base forms lb so they have the same um chain frames if you have our external lb fill support you can also fire off her lb again on turn three before the lb damage buff expires so the 250% LB damage buff only lasts for 3 turns, so as it in turn 1 and then it'll end on turn 3. So she can do damage um, um, uh, turn 2 and turn 3 if you have um, LB damage, uh, LB fill support. Okay, so what are my final thoughts on Draconian Princess Fina? She is really worth awakening if you have copies of her you could also think about using her and buying her fragments or running her through the fragment dungeon it's up to you uh, if you already have um, Envy Terra um, she, but she's a light evoke damage dealer not a fire one so she could still be useful even if you have Envy Terra and she can easily be uh, built up compared to Infernal Fire Rain Right, so she doesn't do much damage in base form. Her base form LB mods have not been boosted, and it's simply there to provide a 200%, a 250% mag boost. However, her brave shift forms LB, it's really hard. So she is easier to build compared to an Infernal Fire Rain, as I said. Since she has mag passives in her kit, I kind of wish she could equip swords naturally, so she can hold. Era Sword Plus without sacrificing a slot for equipped materia, but that's just, just a nitpick. Uh, overall, she is really solid evoke damage magic dealer who is um, uh, light, light element. She really shines when awakened to EX1. So when thinking about awakening her, um, also think about how to awaken her to EX1. That's where her damage, uh, you can really find uh, her damage on EX1. That's her full potential when awakened to EX1. 
So guys, thanks for uh, watching. Hope this helped you um, decide if you want to awaken Draconian Princess Fina. She should be uh, the she should arrive or be awakenable next week since she was in the uh, far plane uh, challenge the brave uh, banner. She she you can see her there along with uh, Dark Fina and Saul and Axar and Cleo. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload new videos to the channel. Thanks again guys for the support and bye bye.